For this video, I'll be working through the introduction to Level 3 Physics 3.1 Internal, which is to carry out a practical investigation to test a physics theory relating two variables in a non-linear relationship. So for my investigation, I thought of something sort of creative. I wanted to investigate the relationship between the time it takes for a water bottle to empty when there's a hole in it. So later on you'll see my experimental setup. I got a well, red hot piece of metal, a uh, red hot screwdriver pushed into the the water bottle to make a hole and then I filled it up for different heights and investigated the relationship between how long the water took to empty out. So in the description if you follow the link you'll come across a page that has pretty much everything you need but I've got it down here just so we can go over it. So in the link it has the relationship is the time is equal to the a over little a c, I'll go what that each means soon, times square root 2 over gravitation or gravity 9.8 times square root of the initial height, which is the height from the center of the hole. So here's here's the hole of hey, my water bottle. You go to the center of the hole, you go across from there up to the starting height of the water. That's the initial height, so that's hi um, minus hf. So hf is where I stopped. Um, I started originally setting HF to zero, but it didn't work because my hole was too small, and the um, the viscosity of water was so thick um, that once it got down to about half a centimeter, the surface tension stopped the water from flowing. So I set my HF to one centimeter. Um, big A is pi times the diameter of the water bottle um, squared over four. It's given to you on that link. Um, and little a is pi times d squared, which is the diameter of the hole um, over 4. And my big D, you'll soon see the video of me doing it, is 0 0.09 meters, so it was 9 centimeters. Um, and the little d was 0 0.005 meters, it was 5 millimeters across. So I'm going to pause the video and just show you roughly my experimental setup and then I'll just go over my results that I got. Right, so before I gather data I should just go over my um, the table that I'm going to write it in. Um, my height is my independent variable because that's the variable that I'll be changing. Um, so I'm going to be changing how much water I put into the water bottle um, and the time is the dependent variable. So the time will be I'll be recording from when I first open the hole and let the water start draining to when the hole or when the water gets one centimetre above the hole. So I've measured, I've, you'll see on the bottle I've measured out the heights along the bottle. So I'm going to go gather the data now and then we'll discuss that. So now as you can see I've gathered my results. I set my uncertainty for my height as half a centimetre. Um, as you can see there, I've written it, meter, written it in metres though because everything should be in SI units. Um, as you can see, my times are fairly similar. Uh, reason being is it's quite a slow process. As you can see, it took me quite a long time. So five minutes for the trial one and so on and so forth. Um, I've written my average time. If you don't know how to take an average, it literally is just add them up and then divide by how many there are. So I've got my average time for each different height. I took five trials, so I could try and be as accurate as possible. Um, and I stopped at 0.2 of a meter. So I stopped at two centimeters um, because below that I was having troubles. So I'll talk about that in my discussion. It is a good discussion point to have. Um, so what I'm going to do now is... I've got my height uncertainty here. I can use that later on in my graph, but what I need to do is find out my time uncertainty. And to find your time uncertainty, what you're gonna do is just find the range. So you're gonna find the largest number, which in this case is, and this for height of 0.12, so 12 centimeters, the largest number is 60.52, and the smallest number happens to be 59.28. So you're gonna go 60.52 minus 59.28, and that should give you 1.24 and I'll just put this because this is seconds so range this is seconds um, and the uncertainty is just half that so if this is the range you know 
that's that's the maximum the number could have possibly been. This is the minimum the number that could possibly be. So that's the range. So the uncertainty we say is in the middle because then it's plus or minus that uncertainty. So then it could be up to the top of the range or down to the bottom of the range. So the uncertainty is just half of 1.24, which is 0.62. So I'll just pause it and I'll figure out the rest of them and then we'll continue. All right, so these are all my uncertainties. As you can see, for each different um, measurement of time, you get a different uncertainty. So that's that's the difference between your dependent uncertainty and your independent. Your independent, you choose based on your experiment. So depending on how you did it, you decide what this uncertainty has to be. And it's got to be reasonable, so you can't just be ridiculous and say two centimetres so you can try and account for everything. Um, it's got to be reasonable. I chose half a centimetre because that was a reasonable decision to make. Um, whereas your time uncertainty is just decided upon your experiment. So as you can sort of see, as the experiment went on, I got better and better at doing it. I suppose that's just experimental technique. So as I got down to two um, centimetres, I got a smaller and smaller uncertainty, which you could probably have as well. If you do an experiment constantly, you get better and better of physically doing it. So now I'm going to draw my graph. Right, so here's the graph that I've started to draw. I've just put the axes, so your independent variable, so if we go back to our height, our height is the independent variable and our time is the dependent because the time depends on the height. You can change the height and that'll change the time, but you can't change the time, change the height. So generally speaking, the, uh, the way to do it is you always put the independent variable on the x-axis. That's just, I suppose, the, the standard that everyone does. And then the time on the y-axis. Um, because the dependent variable goes on the y, the independent variable goes on the x. I have, instead of writing 1 times 10 to the negative um, 3 and 2 times 10 to the negative 3, which would probably be a lot easier, I've just written it um, in full form just because we'll use that technique for the next graph um, and I'll go over some common pitfalls that you can fall into. Notice units, units. So I'm going to pause the video and plot all my points and then we'll discuss. Right, as you can see I've plotted my graphs. I did make a mistake down here. It's 0 0.01 and then 0 0.11 not straight to 0 0.2. Um, you can see it starts to curve off a bit and if we go back to our formula that we were given Time is proportional to the square root of height. So this is height. This should be uh, time is proportional to square root h graph, which it is. You can sort of generally see the curve. And I'm going to just put a rough line of best fit in. And you can see it does curve off. So I've said time is proportional to h. And from now, we can start processing our raw data into a straight line graph. So in order to turn this into a straight line graph, there's a few ways to go about it. The general way is to square, because this is a t is equal to square root h, if you square root all the values along the bottom, that will straighten your graph. You can conversely square the time, because then that will, what's really happening is the height in a running race, the height's beating the time. The height is absolutely taking off before the time even gets a chance. You can either give the time a bit of a head start and square him as well, and that'll straighten it out, or you can put some uh, lead weights on the shoes of the height, slow him down by squaring him, because it's a squared relationship graph. So what we're going to do, and what's going to be a lot easier, is to square the height. So I'm going to pause that, set up a table, and then we'll go through processing it.